Hello. Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday. I hope your work week is going well. I hope that you have a job that brings you passion and that you look forward every morning to getting up to do. I am lucky. I'm one of those people. That's how I feel about my profession and my job. And so if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Carissa Tracy. I'm a pediatric physical therapist and founder and owner of Talk and Thrives. Um, and so conversation comes in. You talk at me at topics that you want to know more about or things that interest you or things that confuse you. Um, and as a physical therapist, things that I can help bring some light to, um, I will. And then um, you guys can go out and thrive in the world. So um, tonight, what I'm going to start talking about, um, and when questions come on, y'all just throw them at me. That's how we roll here. We're easy peasy. Um, I wanted to talk about um, gravity <laughs> and how it affects these guys, okay? Now, those of you that have been watching my videos, I've been using my newborn baby because I, you know, come from a high-risk infant clinic where a lot of the babies are preemies, twins, they're early, they're born small, and so I've, I've been using my baby. But as I explain certain topics, you know, it is hard to explain it. So this, I went and I, you can see the size difference is quite a bit. And I'll be using this little guy um, today so that hopefully you can see a little bit better in some of the positions. So I wanted to talk about gravity and the, the kiddos and babies that I had in mind um, are my kiddos with low tone. I'm gonna do a separate one on babies with high tone and kind of that tight presentation, but tonight I wanted to start with babies with low tone to see if y'all can kind of understand that first, um, and then we'll go to high tone next. Low tone, um, the diagnoses that you might be familiar with, whether you're a parent, grandparent, um, just family friend, um, and you're tuning into this channel just to learn and have information, or you're a therapist yourself, um, Babies or children with Down syndrome typically have that low tone that we are used to seeing. Um, babies with Prader-Willi syndrome have that low tone. It's hard for them you know, to overcome gravity in the same way it is for babies with Down syndrome. And then what I saw a lot in the high-risk infant clinic was just chromosomal um, abnormalities where just certain little parts of each chromosome are either extra or missing or you know, in, in different places than their typical presentation. And so, you know, there can be a lot of reasons, I guess is my point, that a child might have lower tone or um, difficulty overcoming gravity, but we kind of treat it all the same. And so I, I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips for kiddos like that, um, that have low tone that you might come across, whether it's your own or a patient. So I want you guys to think of um, how you feel swimming in a pool, and then when you climb out, how heavy you feel. Okay, you all kind of know what I'm talking about, that feeling where everything is like so labored just to climb up. Um, or women, if you've been pregnant, that feeling of the last month and how hard it is to move around because everything weighs so much and weighs you down. Um, Gravity to kiddos with low tone or babies with low tone is kind of like their biggest enemy, but it's also what can really help them. And I want you to understand what I mean by that. When I have a baby with low tone, um, a lot of people, because they're so cuddly, often they're so cuddly and so, and so squishy and so lovable, a lot of people just wanna hold them all day. And I would say hold them because they're a baby, because you love holding them because they're a baby, but don't hold them because they have low tone. I feel like people, when they see a baby with low tone, they're like, ooh, I don't, you know, I don't wanna challenge them or that looks hard for them. And so babies with low tone, they need all the same activities and all the same milestones that a typical baby does. And if anything, they're gonna need the practice even more to get good at it. But what they need is more rest breaks. So I always like, um, if this mom is watching, she will know, I won't have to say her name, but I had a really special relationship with um, one particular family and a little boy with Down syndrome and I saw him as a baby. I mean, he was like two, three months old when I met him. And, you know, they, I think, were really open to what I had to say and like, you know, they were just kind of like, okay, so, you know, what's next kind of thing. And um, I was like, he's adorable. like. What's next is we're gonna get going with all the typical milestones and they might take them a little bit longer to get there, but we're gonna go in the same order. We're gonna do the same milestones. And the only difference is I'm gonna give him more frequent breaks, 
but I almost want you to kind of practice it more. And so I hope that makes sense to y'all that if you have a child with Down syndrome, Prater Willie, or any chromosomal issue, if there's low tone of any kind, if there's any reason that your baby has low tone, don't think, oh, well, gravity's hard for them, so I'm gonna hold them more. Hold them because they're your baby, of course. But when it's playtime, it's playtime. Don't hold back, let them play, let them work because gravity is their best and worst friend. Does that make sense? It's the thing that's hard for them, yes, they understand, but it's also the thing that will strengthen them. So I just wanna show y'all maybe like two or three of some you know kind of common ones that are good starting points. So um, let me scoot up so y'all can see. So when babies are really young, um, you know, this kind of lap play is really awesome. And babies with low tone, you know, you might need to kind of change this angle and kind of be more here. Uh, but the pull to sit, you guys often will see in doctor's offices, they'll pull the baby up by the arms and they're looking to see if the baby can kind of keep a chin tuck, okay? But a baby with low tone, when you pull them up by the arms like that, their head is like, they can't, I mean, their head's too heavy, right? If I see a baby like that, if I even start to try with their arms and I immediately see them kind of falling back, I, as a therapist, I don't need to keep going. That's just, I know that they can't hold their head. So at that point, I'm gonna scoot behind their shoulder blades and kind of have my fingers free back here to help their head as need be. But I'm gonna work in smaller ranges and let them work on that chin strength. Does that make sense? So with a baby with a low tone, with low tone in this situation, you don't need to do 10 reps of this terrible, you know, position because you see it on some app on your phone that says, well, at this age, I'm supposed to do pull to sits and you're supposed to hold their hands and pull them up. And if they just do this enough times, their neck will get strong. No, that's like way too hard, okay? So bring it in, scoot the shoulder blades and you work on like that chin strengthening in those smaller ranges. Does that make sense? So all these exercises, guys, if your baby does have low tone and there's some sort of diagnosis going on, please understand that you need to talk to your physician first before you try any of these exercises and you need to have a PT that's helping you out, okay? I'm just giving you general information that when you do exercises like this, please, when your baby has low tone, don't stop exercising or think it's too hard for them so we don't do it. And don't just follow anything you see online that is like, obviously they can't do it. It needs to be modified. So my babies with low tone, they exercise just as much if not frequently. I give them more rest breaks than I would a typical baby with normal tone. And I'm going to keep them playing. I want to make it fun, right? So, hey Paige, if you have any questions, we're talking about babies with low tone and why gravity is their best friend because it can strengthen them, but why it's their worst friend because they cry and it's hard and everything's hard. So I'm just encouraging parents and families not to give up and and not have them play. We're going to do the milestones in the same order. We're going to do all the same things, but we're just going to modify it in smaller ranges so the baby can be successful. It's kind of what we've talked about so far. So another example that I might show you guys with babies with low tone. So I think about my little kiddos, my little babies, either with Down syndrome or Prater Willie or a chromosomal abnormality and they have low tone is when they're doing tummy time, um, they might, let me scoot this guy back. They might just need like support under here a little bit longer than their peers, right? But they're still gonna do it. We're still gonna do tummy time for all the same reasons. The activity doesn't change. The reason it's good doesn't change. Just because the baby has low tone doesn't mean you don't do it. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, you guys let me know. Give me like a thumbs up or, you know, kind of let me know. So maybe a way I might modify this for a baby with low tone is I might put them on a wedge and just make it a little easier. Or I might just leave the towel roll here a little bit longer. Okay, but they're still gonna do it. We're not gonna take the activity away, that's my point. I still want you to challenge these babies with low tone, but it just needs to be guided in a way where they're gonna be successful in small ranges and they have rest breaks when they need them. Okay, in the sitting position, much the same way. Y'all know how when a baby starts to hold themselves like this on the floor, that four month mark, it's prop sit, kinda looks like this from the front when the baby has their hands on the floor. Let me scoot the camera back so y'all can see a little better. Whoop. Let's see if I can make this work. Y'all know this position where babies are kind of holding themselves. This is usually like the four month mark. And then six month is typically kind of sitting up tall. What I might see with babies with low tone, guess what? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna work on this prop sit and we're gonna work on sitting up. We might just be a month behind. 
Do you know what I mean? But we're gonna go in the same progression, we're gonna do the same things, we're gonna put the toys in the same position, and we're still gonna do it probably more often with rest breaks. Does that make sense? So don't shy away from gravity positions that force them to have to work. That is the best thing for them, okay? In the crawl position, I can't emphasize this enough. This will probably be the last example I give you. Um, I don't wanna get like too, you know, too treatment E on here for you guys, but Babies with um, low tone, they are gonna want to either W sit. Ah! Don't let them W sit. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be their go to. Okay, the other go to is have y'all ever seen it's so precious because they're precious, but the movement is not precious. When babies can do this and they are so flexible that they straddle transition. So they either go from here, whoop to belly or they're on their belly and legit you see them go whoop and sit up through a straddle transition. I see it a lot with kids with Down syndrome, Prater, Willie, chromosomal stuff. Don't let them straddle transition and don't let them W sit, okay? Um, the best advice and thinking back to that same family, the little boy with Down syndrome, he was amazing. I made him do all the same stuff. We just had to do it in shortened play times more often, okay? And Gravity was his best friend. He got so strong, y'all. He is the strongest little boy. If y'all could just see him now, he is so strong, okay? And it's because we did alignment from the beginning, alignment and weight bearing and working against Gravity from the beginning. That was not something we withheld because he had low tone. We just understood he's gonna need a little bit more breaks. He's gonna have to do it a little more often, but we're not changing the game. He doesn't get to sit like this because he's tired, okay? He would kneel in this nice narrowed base and if he got tired, I would turn him to side sit and circle sit just like I would any other baby, right? Does that make sense? Hey, Sarah Tyler Page, Page Tyler Sarah. Hi guys. Um, if y'all have any questions, shoot them in. Um, we're talking about low tone in babies and how gravity is their best friend because it can strengthen them, but it's their worst friend because they'll cry because it's hard. Okay, all right, so that kneeling position, gosh, I just can't even say enough about it for little kids and little babies with low tone. Um, and then of course, working up to that tall kneel. But if they get tired in these positions as they're playing, then side sit them and turn them to circle sit just like you would any other baby. Do not let them W and do not let them straddle and you know fly wherever they want because they can, you know, they're so flexible. Don't let them. So what questions do you guys have, if any? Um, if y'all don't have any questions, I just wanted to come on real quick tonight and just let you guys know that low tone is really common for a lot of reasons. Down syndrome, I would say, is probably one of the more common diagnoses, but there are several diagnoses where babies will present with low tone, which just means that their muscles have a harder time contracting and holding against gravity. They fatigue easier, they have endurance issues, and therefore sometimes have flexibility, like too much of it, and so they are more prone to joint issues and things kind of splaying and kind of not being as supported as they should be because they don't have that muscle girdle around each joint kind of holding it in place. And so over time they can have injury or they can have pain. And the idea as a PT, when you're working with babies with low tone, is just because you know it will be hard for them, it sometimes is the best thing. You just have to modify it. You just have to reel it in, bring it in, educate those families so they know, hey, I know this is hard you know, for so-and-so, but stick with it. Do it in these ranges, do it the way I'm showing you, and then the baby will be really successful. Okay, Meredith, Laura, as you guys come on, do y'all have any questions? Um, we are talking about babies with low tone tonight and why gravity is their best and worst friend. Their best friend because it's their strengthener. It actually makes them stronger working against gravity, but why it's hard for them and why I'm encouraging families not to shy away from exercise but to just make it guided by their PT and smaller amounts, giving rest breaks, all that good stuff. Don't let them straddle transition. Don't let them W sit. But you guys both already knew that. So do y'all have any questions that I have not answered that are about babies with low tone? Any questions coming in? 
If not, our next video about tone will be um, high tone. So babies that are that stiff presentation and it's difficult for them to bend and move. So I'll do another one on that, but I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any family members, um, friends, family that have babies with low tone, um, and this also is kids that are undiagnosed and just having difficulty moving against gravity. I know we saw that a lot in the high risk infant, infant clinic. Sometimes they don't even have a diagnosis, but they're behind in their skills. If you guys see W sitting and straddle transitioning, even if there's not a diagnosis on board, that definitely is probably on the low tone side of things to have that much excess excess flexibility, I should say, and difficulty holding themselves against gravity. Another diagnosis I can think of in clinic that came through is Angelman um, that presents as low tone in the beginning. Um, those are kind of our more common ones that we saw. Of course, babies that have, if they have any um, stroke in utero or any kind of brain bleed, a lot of our preemies, if they've got brain bleeds in the threes and fours, um, some of them get real tight and present like um, cerebral palsy, which will be in the next video. But some of them have some weakness um, as a result. So again, it just depends what happened and where in the brain it's affecting. But um, you can have low tone for a lot of different reasons. So I just want you guys to not show eye from exercise, give them extra rest breaks, and understand that alignment is everything. Your hands over their pelvis better be giving them good alignment because their muscles are really having to overwork just to be there. Do you know what I mean? So specifically to my therapists that are on right now, when you have a baby in tall kneeling, I mean, you really need to be on that glute. You need to like give that lateral support and the glute at the same time. Like just really load that hip. Like if you could put that hip in the perfect place and hold it there, that's what your hands want to be doing. And then you kind of ease up your tension and let the baby's muscles work and then give support when they fatigue and then loosen up and let them work and then give support. And if they're doing really good, give, give some um, balance bobbles and see what they do you know, challenge them. Okay. I miss all of you. I love all of you dearly. It's really neat to see all of you on. Paige, you have to let me know what you're up to these days. Um, I know we talked recently, so that was good to hear from you. Tyler, I get to see you every day, so you're good to go. Sis, I know you're well. Meredith, wait, didn't you just have a baby? Oh my gosh, you need to update me there. Um, Laura, you have to tell me what you're up to too, because we got to, we used to be able to work together every day, which was fun. And so I miss you. So I hope everyone's doing great. Um, this is the end of low tone. And then we will give some, um, ideas, tips and strategies, and just things to think about when you have a baby with high tone. Uh, we'll do that one tomorrow. Okay. Good night, everybody. Love you guys. Oh, last announcement. I think most of you know, I just started a Facebook page. Um, and it's a group. So I have this, Pearl Pediatric Therapy. This is my business page, and these videos will not stop. They will always stay on this page. However, I thought it might be good to have a community for people to just connect. So the group is for parents, grandparents, teachers, just community, basically anyone that loves babies, toddlers, and children and wants to know or learn more about things that we do in the therapy world for that you know, birth to five. And so the group is called Prenatal to Pre-K. Um, physical therapy place. And so we've got like funny, you know, little quotes and humor mixed in. And then we've got like um, treatment ideas and maybe like some home ideas, um, all different topics. So baby to that kind of pre-K age. Um, I've posted, I don't know, over 50 in the past 24 hours, all different topics. I try to make that page kind of quick topics where you can share it to someone, tag someone, and it's meant to be super helpful. So I've got that going on as a community that I want to build. And then I've got my business page um, here with some more educational videos and stuff. So please, you guys come join um, the Facebook group. Um, it's a little more casual for sure, um, but still helpful. Definitely still helpful to have you in that group and staying in touch. And the cool thing is like someone will comment. Um, I always ask people on the topic, comment your, you know, favorite blank of whatever the topic is, topic is. And it's really cool to hear other people's advice and other people's experiences. So if it's something about, um, like, I think there was like the truth about ADHD and somebody has a book that they recommend they send that to me, then I can post it out to you guys. Um, there was another one that 
um, something about emotional regulation and somebody said, I like the zones of regulation and someone said, what's that? And so it's really cool. It's kind of like that. Um, I've posted some baby milestones. Like, uh, there was this funny little image. It's like the scoop on your baby's poop and it's like the colors and what it means or, um, little medical blurbs about what temperature is okay at certain ages. I've done some sleep um, schedules, like a, a grid about a sleep schedule, like anything that I feel like is helpful to anyone that serves um, babies to that five-year-old age or parents of that age, I am posting. So um, follow me here at Pearl and then um, join that group prenatal to pre-K um, physical therapy place. And then if you guys have any patients that you know I can help, please send them my way. Um, just started with some new ones this week and it's a joy and a pleasure and an honor and I love my job and my profession and where my career is going and I wish all of you well as well. Have a great week.